Okay, so this is typically what the frames come in. The overlays, the ones that include glass, the ones that have the integration frames come in a tube assembled without glass. So you can see it's from QQ Labs, it tells you, you know, which ones you bought. I've got a small one here, it's a 24 inch, you know, screen size with a multi-touch of six points. So we're going to open it up and see what's inside. Comes in really nice wrapped styrofoam. Package contents for the 24 inch frame, as you can see, is a USB cable, driver CD, double sided tape. So this is the frame itself. The 24 inch has the cable already connected. This is actually very similar to an integration frame. Uh, it almost looks like it is an integration frame. They just sell it as an overlay. Uh, anyways, the integration frames come with a female USB as you can see here. It has a cable going directly in. The only source of power that it needs actually is the power coming from the USB cable. The larger frames all have a power adapter and a USB plug that come in here, uh, which is the overlays. And the overlays are the ones with a glass layer on it. The integration frames just come with the four sides disassembled and you, you screw them together and assemble it. So, basic overlay, overlay. Let me show you what we're talking about here. There's a frame here, there's a piece of black plastic going all the way around in the inside here, uh, just above the surface. This is where the LEDs and infrared sensors are, and they're all the way around, so this requires no camera, and it coordinates where you're touching on the screen based on where these sensors are placed. So basically, you know, it'll put your hand down here, and it'll since the LED will come here, there's LEDs all the way around so it lights up your fingers and then there's sensors and it detects where your finger is based on the light reflected off of it. So there's no cameras involved, this is all it takes to be multi-touch. You just take this and you put it over a monitor. And we're going to do just that. Okay, so here we have a simple LCD monitor. Uh, as you can see, it's a normal LCD monitor, real thin, a couple inches thick. And we're going to turn this into a multi-touch monitor. Uh, once again, this can be done with any size frame. This can be a, this is like 22 inch uh, monitor. That can be a 40 inch, a 50 inch, 60 inch, whatever size TV screen or LCD screen you have. It can be a projection image. There could be a projector underneath and we could be projecting and having an image created. And all you do to make it multi-touch is you take any of the frames and you simply put it on top. Uh, we're going to attach some of the double-sided sticky tape here to the frame and you know attach it so that when you touch down it doesn't slide around like you see here. Next you're going to install the software from PQ Labs. It comes on a CD. I have it here downloaded onto my computer. Driver software, just go ahead and install it. All 
All right. Once it installs, it says that it wants to run. Then you're going to plug the USB cables in and the power cable. If you have a larger screen, the 24 inch, like I said before, only needs the USB power to make it run. Plug it on in. Here it's detecting the driver and installing. All right, you can see that as soon as it finished installing, the PQ Lab software automatically detected the serial number, the firmware, the hardware, what kind of screen it was. You can see it's exactly what it is. It's a G3 Basic with six points. And status says running okay. And you can see that it's working. Now you can, it's a little off and that's probably because it's not calibrated. So we're gonna go into the calibration. Go into the calibration, simple white screen. All you gotta do is touch the point and let go as soon as it turns green. And you're done. Much better. So, fully supports Windows, fully supports Macintosh. Uh, you can launch apps. Since this is the six point multi touch version, and it can do up to six points one, two, three, four, four, five. I'll clear that screen so you can see that better. Five and six. So if you try and do seven, you can see it's only doing one, two, three, four, five, six. So it'll do up to that amount. There's dual touch, there's 32 touch, and of course this is a six touch one that we're using now. It can perform all the normal Windows 7 controls. So if you're clicking on a picture or whatnot, you can do the two finger rotate. This works automatically with the driver software. You can do the zoom, two finger zoom. It can also perform when you're in a browser, just like your standard Windows 7 controls. You can do forward, back motions. You can scroll up and down. Everything's touch enabled. So whatever you can normally do with Windows 7 and its built-in drivers, you can do with this frame. Taking a look at the control panel for the driver, you can adjust the move sensitivity, the double click speed, how large the dot is. So if you have large buttons on your software and it's typically meant for a touch environment more than it is standard Windows or a normal operating system environment, you can typically, you know, you can you would want to increase the size of the dot so that it would be easier to hit those blocks, maybe if you're making some DJ software and the blocks are, you know, this big or so on the screen, well all you need to do is just make the dot big so that you can easily click that button. Uh, calibration, we saw before, advanced, we'll do a d testing thing and it'll make sure do some advanced calibrations. Here's the output category here. It shows the TUI output and flash TUI output, so it'll output both of those languages so you can work with your existing TUI programs or flash TUI programs. So let's demonstrate that now.
Okay, so some of you may be wondering how these frames perform with sunlight because the cameras themselves in touch setups have difficulty tracking when you have lots of ambient light, sunlight, infrared light. Well, the infrared touch frames actually do much, much better. So here we are in the room and the windows are mostly uh, closed, the blinds are shut. Uh, so it's fully calibrated right now, as you can see. So it's really, really good. So what I'm gonna do is open the window So I have tons and tons of sunlight coming in the room right now. You can see my shadow just from the window being open. And here we are again, doing the same tracking. So all the same. So even if you have varying light conditions, sunlight coming in and out, the frame should work fine. Uh, I have heard that some of the very, very large frames may have a diminishing tracking once it gets towards the center more of the screen, but it should be still pretty good and usable. Um, if there's direct sunlight on the larger screens, probably isn't recommended. And now let's try and see what the screen looks like outside. Okay, so here we are in direct sunlight. The LCD image is obviously washed out as most LCDs and projected images pretty much would be in direct sunlight. So this is just a test. Obviously it's not really a real world application as it probably isn't something that most people would ever do. Uh, as you can see, just sitting here, it's already created a couple touch points. So I'm just gonna drag my fingers across so you can get an idea of pretty much how terrible it works um, in direct sunlight. The infrared light from the sun obviously washes out the touching, uh, the touch um, sensing uh, infrared sensors around the edge so let me just show you here I know it's really hard to see but it seems to be working semi okay in the center it works better but just dragging even a single finger around you can see it kinda kinda works but this is a six point touch frame I will say that the response time is faster and that's probably because my fingers are heavily lit up by infrared light due to the direct sunlight so the camera sensors are, or the, the um, infrared sensors are much easier to detect the points. But let me just show you what five fingers dragged across the screen looks like because it's actually pretty bad. There we go. Yep, there it goes. So I know it's really hard to see. I apologize. Obviously, direct sunlight's hard, but yeah. So wonderful. So two fingers dragging across, and basically too much, too much infrared light to have the sensors figure out where exactly you're touching. You can see that we're still outside. Uh, we're just in the shade, so direct sunlight's really only a few feet away, but we're on an overhang. And so we're getting shade. There's no direct sunlight hitting the screen, but there's plenty of plenty of infrared light bouncing around and lighting up the area out here. Um, but I just want to show you how much different the tracking is compared to having it in direct sunlight. So here we go. And as you can see, it is perfect. You probably wouldn't want to use really large frames. Uh, because of the infrared light from the LEDs not being able to reach your fingers when it's having to compete with, you know, ambient sunlight or whatnot. So if you're trying to make really, really large images, probably best to have it in a controlled lighting situation, not with varying sunlight on it. And also any of these screens that are going to have varying lighting conditions, you may see that you have to calibrate them if you're having a huge contrast between certain lighting situations. You know, obviously between fully off and fully on ambient light, could be a problem, but if you're just having moderate changes, the frames work just fine. So we've compared ambient sunlight, direct sunlight, inside we also looked at light coming in through a window. These frames will work anywhere that you're not getting any direct high intensity infrared light like the sunlight or perhaps a very, very bright uh, incandescent bulb, but really good news 
you can use it outside where there's lots of infrared light bouncing around, something you could not do with the infrared cameras and it's all due to the setup of the infrared light and the infrared sensors on the frames versus the cameras and such on the normal optical tracking setup. If you need to build a setup outside that needs to be able to track fingers and whatnot with either a camera setup or an infrared touch frame, you're much better off going with an infrared touch frame just because you can have all this ambient infrared light but you know you can't have a direct sunlight but you can still use it in all the normal situations you would probably be using an LCD or a projector image I mean you wouldn't want to have an LCD in direct sunlight anyways it would totally wash out the image so there's no point in using it this is the perfect thing to use an infrared touch frame as you can see you know again we're in the shade and lots of good tracking